Hi there, and welcome to this latest edition of Cox Talks Live. In this episode, you call Full Send, we're going to talk about commodities. If uh, you're a small cap investor trading Canadian stocks, you couldn't have escaped the word commodity in the last couple of weeks. So before we dive right in, uh, why don't we get the fine print out of the way? Uh, this is not investment advice. This is for information purposes only. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell securities. And I have probably made errors in this presentation. So please do your own due diligence. Alrighty, so what's a full send, you ask? You may have heard of it in other, con in other contexts. Well, in this context, it's when one sector or segment starts to work for a high percentage of all stocks that are in that sector or segment. It's when generalist institutions start buying and when Bay Street and House Street start closing large private placements quickly. FOMO, fear of missing out, equals momentum. Uh, these can last weeks, months, or more rarely, years. You gotta be nimble, you gotta be fast, you gotta be careful. Recent examples of, uh, of these full send moments have been in cannabis, psychedelics, electric vehicles, crypto, and vegan. So why commodities now? Well, in two words, inflation and Russia. Obviously, it's a bit more complex than just these two words, but if energy prices go up, so does the cost of mining, refining, producing, transportating, uh, all other commodities and goods, such as lithium, fertilizer, grain, copper, you name it. Energy is the backbone of an economy. And here's another reason why we're getting inflation is the buying power of dollars. And this is sort of the same for most uh, countries uh, in the last several years, really since 2008. They've really been printing a lot of currency. They've been increasing the total money supply, which means when there's more dollars sloshing around, that obviously the buying power is reduced. It takes more of those dollars because there's more of them in circulation to buy the same ounce or pound or gram uh, of a commodity. And so that's another reason why commodity prices have been increasing is because there's been a massive amount of money printing. You can just look at this chart here with the money supply from the 1960s all the way here to 2020. Um, you're seeing a marketable increase. The two items that I have, or the two uh, circles there, you'll see one around 2008 when there was that economic collapse and they had to do a bunch of bailouts. And then also for COVID in 2020 when there's been trillions of dollars uh, that have been printed. It's going to have a long lasting effect. Another reason why uh, Russia is causing uh, the price of commodities to increase uh, is really if you look at what the percentage of world supply for oil, for natural gas, for aluminum, for nickel, for copper, and also 42% of global uranium refinement capacity. So it means that across the board, by uh, having these sanctions where, no, where Western nations aren't going to be buying any more of this supply from Russia, um, it's going to have a short-term effect and it's going to make commodities, it's a supply, it's the old, old supply and demand. When there's less supply and there's the same demand, the price is going to go up. So if you look at any of the commodities, you look at gold, you look at palladium, you look at nickel, you look at crude, they're all up. They're all up marketably dramatically. If you look at crude, uh, which is a really important indicator of the health of an economy, um, you can see that the last time we saw oil prices kind of around this level, um, well, when we had a big spike last time, which was in the 2007 and 8, it preceded an economic collapse, a recession. That can happen. And we've had a massive increase in, in a short period of time in the price of oil. It's causing pain at the pump. It's causing pain in, in terms of transportation costs. We're going to start uh, receiving fuel surcharges for everything uh, where there's major transport involved. When we have to hop on a flight, when we want to go on vacation, when we want to take a taxi, we want to rent a car. It's all going to be, it, It's get, we're going to feel it. And again, oil is so important in the backbone of everything, in the production of goods, and the transportation of goods, and the in the mining of the commodity. Uh, so 
it has a massive trickle down effect. However, you got to be careful before you start uh, listening to every talking head, including me. I just wanted to show you uh, what you know what some of these other talking heads have been saying about the price of oil. 2017 oil price will will never return to $100. Uh, 2020 oil may never hit $100 again. Uh, 2015. $100, never again. There's a new normal for oil. And again, in 2015, a Saudi prince says, we'll never see $100 barrels again. Well, they were wrong. Here we are. With uh, there being no end in sight for the conflict in Ukraine uh, and new supplies of commodities that will take time to shift and bring online, could there be some more MOMO to this FOMO? Now, obviously, it's a horrible situation with what's going on with Ukraine. So I don't want to make this all about making money off of other people's hardships. Uh, this I really just try to uh, keep this channel to talking about the investment opportunities and highlighting and interviewing uh, and providing content for you. I'm trying to stay away from the political side of things. But obviously, uh, our, our hearts uh, are with uh, the people of Ukraine and other um communities and countries that are that are facing uh, hardship based upon this. Uh, we really hope that there's going to be an end uh, soon, a peaceful end soon. So um, if we just get back to the investment side of it, let's full send it. Let's buy 10 commodity related stocks and let's see how we'll do over the next 30 days. This is a very risky sort of proposition. So Please do not mimic, don't, don't copy, don't take this advice. Again, it's not buy and sell advice. It's really for information purposes only. Uh, so, But I, what we've done is we allocated roughly $10,000 to 10 different stocks and built a $100,000 portfolio a few days ago on March 9th. And what did we buy? Well, let's get into it. On March 9th, we bought 8,000 shares at $1.27 of Critical Elements Lithium Corp. Our friend Grant Beasley, who, and by the way, go follow him on Twitter, Grant M. Beasley. This guy is amazing. His content is right on. He has been sort of calling the surge in, in commodity prices well before the Russian uh, invasion of Ukraine. And uh, this, is a, this is a stock that uh, he's highlighted. Um, you can go check out his Twitter. I've, I've got a tweet there. It's a little hard to read. It's a little small on the screen, but... It's one of those, well, it's a company that he seems to like. So you know what? In the portfolio it goes. Lithium, check. Uh, what else did we buy? We bought on March 9th, 30,000 shares at 37 cents of Mako Mining Corp. It's a near-term gold producer. Again, our friend Grant is a big fan of this company. Akiba Leishman um, is the, the founder and CEO of the company. He has a, a, a strong background in investment management and has been a longtime investor in the mining space. Uh, so let's see, uh, let's see what this uh, near-term um, uh, gold producer has in store. On March 9th, we bought 200 shares at 6180 of Wheaton Precious Metals Corp. This is a metal streaming company. What does that mean? They lend money to companies that want to build mines or want to de uh, further develop exploration of their mining properties. Uh, it is typically a lower risk way of having exposure to the mining market rather than taking exploration risk on just a couple of exploration properties. They can invest into dozens. This is one of the largest, one of the more successful ones. And so this, is, uh, this allows us to sort of get a bit of a basket sort of exposure to a bunch of metals. Again, a grant, one of Grant's, uh, uh, another stock that he's been highlighting uh, he's been bang on with a lot of his calls on this. So uh, we just wanted to take a moment to, to uh, uh, mention that. Uh, we also bought 400 shares uh, at 2762 of SSR Mining. It's a, uh, it's a gold producer, produces, I guess, about 700,000 ounces a year of gold equivalent. Uh, so uh, again, gold producers, people that are actually monetizing the metal, and metals uh, and commodities are typically the first to kind of move before the exploration ones. Uh, so this is a high quality one that does have, offer uh, uh, multiple advanced term uh, projects and multiple mines. 
On March 9th, we picked up 1,000 shares at 1238 of Energy Fuels, Inc. It's a, this is for our uranium exposure with uh, the world looking to get off of gas and petroleum uh, and fossil fuels, um, a, na a natural um, interim step before going up to full renewables is obviously looking at uranium, nuclear power. Uh, it's a pretty clean way to go. And uh, with so much of that uh, um, refinement capacity coming offline here for Western, uh, Western countries, uh, we think that uh, the price of uranium is going to continue to climb. And so uh, this company provides uh, some interesting exposure to that. Where did we come across this? From uh, Carson Siebold, who's been a longtime, very successful commodity investor, co-founded a $2 billion gold, uh, gold producer, uh, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Uh, but you can go follow him on Instagram. He's, got, he's opened up his account. He's got amazing content. You can't miss it. And go follow him at Stock Operator 1980. He's a beauty. Uh, we also got another uh, one. This is on the energy side, Sintana Energy. We added 50,000 shares at 19 cents. Uh, we also got this one from, uh, from Carson. Uh, this one is a, a provides South American uh, exposure to energy. Again, if there's going to be some difficult time over in Europe and other places, uh, North America is going to have to look to South America for, for uh, further uh, uh, reserves of, of uh, oil and gas in the, in the short term. And uh, maybe Santana here will, uh, will benefit. Uh, it's an explorer. Uh, then we've also got another one from Carson called Trillion Energy. Um, it's got a great ticker, TCF. And uh, uh, this one uh, provides uh, some uh, European uh, gas exposure. Uh, so exactly who is being most affected right now with the highest spike uh, and, and shortages of gas because of, because of Russia is Europe. So this one uh, should, uh, th this one could provide some great uh, sort of uh, exposure to that market. And, uh, and then another one from Grant, we added a thousand shares at 1210 of Silvercrest Metals. This is a near term high grade silver producer in Mexico. Uh, it's supposed to be coming online in terms of production here relatively soon over the next couple of months with most of it financed. Uh, so we think, uh, will there ever be a silver squeeze? We've heard it talked about a lot. Um, it's got some catching up to do to the price of gold, uh, that's for sure. And uh, this one, uh, typically, again, if you're looking for exposure to silver, uh, this one usually provides great leverage both up and down to that price of silver. And we also add another gold producer here, K92 Mining. They've got a high, very high-grade gold mine. Um, this one uh, we originally heard about through uh, Brian Slarchuk uh, and his partner there, uh, Carson. They co-founded this company several years back, uh, and they were, they've done an amazing job on putting this project into production and then expanding production and, and actually ramping it up into a Tier 1 a gold producing asset that's uh, over in the Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, just, just a little north of Australia. Uh, so um, anyways, this one again, usually has high torque to the price of gold. So if the price of gold continues to perform well, this one should uh, again, provide a little bit added leverage, both on the upside and downside for it. Uh, this one is a big, uh, Bay Street's a big fan of this one. So it's, it's usually a very highly liquid name. And uh, something a little different, uh, we also added 100 shares at 2328 of Grizzle Growth ETF. Uh, this is from uh, the Grizzle Media guys. Uh, so uh, Scott Willis and Thomas George. Give Thomas a follow on the, on, on the Twitter. Um, he's, uh, he provides great, great, amazing content, great calls. I don't know when these guys sleep because they're pumping out the content all day, all weekend long. And um, anyways, so this provides a basket type approach to some larger cap. They're active managers of this thing, sort of moving stocks in and out. Um, the only issue with it right now is it's a little bit of liquid. It only trades, I guess, on average, about a thousand or fifteen hundred shares a day. From what I can see, I could be wrong, but it looks like it's a pretty low on the volume. So we were only able to pick up 100 shares on uh, on March 9th. So anyways. Um, here's the portfolio. We put it into a public portfolio um, over on Yahoo. And that's actually, if you, if you look there, that's actually where you can go and look at this yourself. You won't be able to see the individual positions, but you can follow along and see how the portfolio is performing. 
So if you go to um, if you go to uh, that uh, URL there, uh, it's public. You can go and have a look at it and see how we're doing. So let's see how we do over the next 30 days. We're providing an update on this. And maybe we miss out on some stocks that you think are better. Can you please let us know what you think of this in the comments below? Uh, anyways, thanks so much. And until next time.